No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is Joshua Daniel George and a slightly different video this time we're not going to be talking about social media marketing SMA or anything like that we're actually going to be talking about um, another income stream of mine which is uh, property investments and then buy to let uh, properties um, and I'm currently in one of the apartments uh, that we have purchased in Liverpool in the UK um, and as you can see, this is my little workstation for today. Um, so we are quite close to the waterfront to be fair. Um, so this is Liverpool and then you've got the Albert Dock um, on the left hand side there, the waterfront and the Three Graces is just beyond um, all these buildings here. And real estate is, is something that I've been interested in you know, for quite a while. Um, we actually purchased this property in 2016 or 17, something like that. Obviously, you know, it did take time to build. We've got two more properties um, on the other side of the, the waterfront, basically. Um, and those won't be ready until 2022. I think one is ready in Q1, the first quarter, and then one is ready in the third quarter. Has had a bit of a delay because of the, the corona. But um, what I'll do is I'll either do like a, a like a B-roll of those properties getting built or some kind of drone footage. I've actually got the drone with me, um, just over me speaking right now. Um, and if, don't, if, not, if I don't do it, then I'll show you guys a little later on and maybe make a vlog out of this on, uh, on the properties just to keep you guys in the loop on everything that I am doing. Um, so if you are, in either of my coaching programs or you know if you've just been following me along for you know a bit longer than just this video um i have you know touched on this point a few times but not really in depth so what i'll do in this video is i'll basically give you guys a breakdown of my thought process and the strategy like the 30 day or the 30, 50 day 30 year um plan with all of this because what i want to do is i want to basically make this a seven figure you know property slash real estate business that generates passive income will basically fund my retirement and so on and so forth um obviously you know that's very far away from now you know no nowhere near the point where i actually want to retire yet, but um you know eventually you know we will need to sort of move away from the agency world and find something that is a bit more physical offline tangible and so on and so forth not that the agency business model is you know going to leave anytime soon but it is just something that personally i want to transition to in the next 10 15 years something like that but i'll give you guys a quick room tour while we're here it's not extremely big but you know it does the job and um every time i come here to uh, to liverpool you know obviously we can stay here as well so this is the living room slash kitchen this is bathroom number one This is bedroom number one. Bathroom number two. And this is bedroom number two. And quite funny to see that there's just this in the middle of the room and that is basically where the old building was originally so this whole building is actually renovated and that is still part of the old building and they can't actually get rid of it because a lot of the building is sort of leaning on 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 that um like i said i can't think of a better way to put it pole so they can't actually get rid of that um but yeah that is a quick room tour and um the two other properties will be of a similar size um one being slightly bigger with a balcony and the other one being slightly smaller but also all around the same size, all around the same like, you know, interior and so on and so forth. What's going on guys? So I just wanted to re-record this last part of the video just to make it a bit more clearer to you guys. Um, in the original video, I basically explained this without a whiteboard, without you know using some kind of a sheet to really map it all out for you guys. And looking back at the video, it was a bit difficult to understand. So I thought, you know what, let me just re-record this video with the whiteboard app. So 
In terms of buy-to-let properties, etc., um, there are a few things that you need to know, and you know, there's obviously a lot of things that I need to, to, uh, to look into and to understand, etc. And of course, I'm from the Netherlands, so for me to buy property in the UK, um, despite the fact that I've got an English background, obviously, you know, was um, a little bit of, um, you know, well, quite a lot of hard work, actually. Um, actually needed to re, you know, sign up for an English nationality, get an English NI number and so on and so forth. So it was a bit of a pain, but um, I just wanted to map out my thought process and how it's not actually as difficult as people make out once you get through all of that red, ta red tape and all of that um, English bureaucracy. So, um, in terms of buy to let, let me just write it all out, buy to let property investment, um, there's a few things that you need to know, and I just want to also work out or show you guys, portray to you guys um, the numbers behind all of it. So what I'm going to do is I'll use fictional numbers first, just to easily explain it to you guys, and then I'll explain the actual numbers and the actual figures behind the properties that I have invested in. So first things first, um, let's say you find a property in the UK. I'm going to use UK figures here because that is the only sort of um, you know, property investment structure that I know. Um, so let's say you find a property. Um, so property and it's priced at £100,000. So £100,000. Okay, so that is your property price. Now, you don't need to put down the £100,000 unless you want to pay for it cash, okay? So this number shouldn't actually scare you, okay? Because what you actually put down is roughly 20%. Sometimes it's a bit lower, sometimes it depends on how you structure it, whether you do it with a limited company and so on and so forth. But let's just take 20%, okay? So your deposit is £20,000 in this case. Let me just see how we can do the, the pound sign again. There we go. So twenty thousand pounds. That is your deposit. I'll just move this over here. There we go. Okay. So that is, um, like I said before, that is twenty percent is what you put down. Then, obviously, you've got your solicitor fees. Um, you know, you, you've got like you can get like a survey done where you basically check over the property and so on and so forth. For me, this was slightly different because we did it through a sort of buy-to-let property agency. Um, but obviously, you know, when you do set it up via a mortgage, you obviously have the solicitor fees that you can't get out of. Um, so solicitor fees, how do we spell solicitor? There we go. And then that was, uh, let's say 1700 roughly. So you've got your solicitor fees, which is roughly 1700. And like I said, Usually, if you don't go through a um, buy-to-let property agency, you've got uh, your stamp that you need to sort out. You've got a survey where someone will go in, um, value the house, make sure that it's all you know it's all properly. The value of the property that is the the listed value of the property is um, you know the same as the actual value of the property, and so on and so forth. Um, so we didn't actually have that because we, we used the buy-to-let property agency. Um, so you've got that. And like I said, we did have a mini survey. That is because the, um, so the, usually this can be much higher than the actual price that I'm gonna put up now. Um, the survey that we had was roughly 500 pounds. The reason being is because the property, the building that we bought the property in um, was an old building that they renovated. So there's a few little things that we wanted to just double check to make sure everything is settled correctly in that way. That's why we paid 500 pounds to get it, you know, basically valued and surveyed and so on and so forth. Okay, then of course, you've got your mortgage. So you paid your deposit of 20,000 pounds and then the remaining 80,000 pounds of the property price is what you get the bank to pay for you. Okay, so the bank pays 80K, you pay 20K, with that together, you can buy a house valued at 100K, and then the bank's basically paid for your, you know, for, for the for the property, and then you pay the bank in monthly installments in the form of a mortgage. And then obviously, you know, there's a, there's a percentage of interest that they pay, um, but just to keep things simple, let's say to set up a mortgage, um, mortgage, it costs you, let's say a thousand pounds. It'll probably be much cheaper than that. Um, I've actually, I actually thought it was quite interesting to see that to set all this up was actually much cheaper than in the Netherlands. I always think the Netherlands is outrageous 
in terms of um, like getting things set up and, and, and you know, getting the mortgage sorted and so on and so forth. Um, so let's say three thousand pounds to get um, not three thousand, sorry guys, a um, thousand pounds to get the mortgage set up, to get all the bank sorted and so on and so forth. Okay, so that means because this property price, this is not actually what you pay. This is just the value of the property. So your total investments in this case for this example is actually only, um, so let's just say total investment is 20, 21, 22, 700, 23, 300. So 23,300 pounds. That is your total investment to get that property. Okay, now, like I said, the bank has basically funded 80% of you know the property. So what you then do is you pay the bank the mortgage. So you pay a monthly fee to the bank to sort of slowly pay off that loan that you've got with the bank, okay? So let's say the mortgage is for a property of 100K. It, it, it depends on how you structure it. Um, let's say that's 80,000 divided by a 30 year mortgage is 2,666 a month. Uh, at 2,666 a year, sorry, and that is roughly 222 a month, okay? So with a 30-year mortgage, an 80K, um, 80K loan, 30-year mortgage uh, is 222 a month. Let's just say 250, just to make things easier. So we've got a 250 pounds a month mortgage. There we go. And now, obviously, we need to figure out a way to get that back. And as I already mentioned, uh, what we're doing is we're actually putting this up uh, on Airbnb, booking.com and so on and so forth to rent it out to people. And the, the, what we now try and do, the aim of the game here, is to get that mortgage cost to be covered by the rental income, which is actually quite easy to do because what we're doing with the property that I just showed you in the video, we're renting that out for 250 a night. So hypothetically speaking, if you were to rent that out of a weekend, sorry. So if you were to rent that out for one weekend, um, then you know the one night, so from Friday to Saturday, for example, you've basically covered your mortgage for that entire month. Okay, so on average, because um, we do this for Airbnb, we rent it out from anywhere between 100 and 250 a night, depending on what day of the week it is. So if it's a weekend, there's a football game going on, Liverpool play at home, uh, or even Everton play at home, or there's um, you know, there's some kind of event in Liverpool, then obviously, you know, we'll go for the 250 a night. Otherwise, it's around 100 to 200 a night, um, you know, to, to basically rent it. Okay, so let's say it's, um, let's just take 200 a night. So 200 nights will be an income of 6,000 a month. So Airbnb income will be 6,000 a month. Now let's say, um, you know, we don't rent it out for 200 a night, but we rent it out for 100 a night. You know, that is, so I'll put Airbnb income low is 3,000 a month. And I'll put this one as uh, high. Okay, so anywhere from, um, there we go, anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 a month is what we can get off this one property. And our mortgage, as I mentioned, is 250 a month. So let's, again, let's just make things easy. Um, let's say our rent income is, let's say 2K a month, okay? Because obviously not every single day will be rented out. The average, um, like post-corona, of course, uh, during the coronavirus, you know, during the pandemic, this was a bit more difficult than, um, you know, than me explaining it now. So let's say post-corona, um, it's 2,000 a month income. So some days we don't rent it out, um, sometimes, you know, we rent it out for 250 a night and so on and so forth. So let's say rental income through Airbnb is 2000 a month. Okay. Let's get this back up to 50 just so it's nice and organized. There we go. Okay. Now we've got our mortgage that is 250 a month. And then of course we've got insurances and so on and so forth. Um, so, but insurances are, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was for around 50 a month. So, 50 a month. So, we've got 300 a month in costs and we've got 2,000 a month in income, which leaves us with a monthly profit of 1,700 a month. 
okay? So that is basically um, how we've set things up. So our initial investment is 23,300. Our monthly profit is 1,700. And then from there, it's basically just to quickly recoup that investment and then buy more properties. So let's say um, you know these numbers are all you know actual numbers. Then our return on investment would be after twenty three three thousand, oh twenty three three thousand, uh, which is our initial investment, divided by seventeen hundred, which would leave us with thirteen and a half months. So after thirteen months, let's say thirteen and a half months, we've got our return on investment. So just over a year. So in just uh, over a year, we can basically recoup our investments and then put that down as a deposit for the next property. And that is basically, you know, my long-term plan. So let's say this all goes well. We do this on a consistent basis. Um, and rather than just the one property, let me just zoom out a bit just to give you guys a bit more space to see what, what's going on. So let's say we don't do this with one property, but we have four properties. So one, two, three, four. Okay, now these properties, let's say they've all got a mortgage of not, not 250, but let's say they've got a mortgage of a thousand a month. Again, just to make things easy. Um, so a thousand pounds a month mortgage. So just for this example, we'll have a higher mortgage than in the initial example, just to show you guys how quickly it is to build wealth with property, okay? So we've got 4,000 a month in costs in this scenario, yeah? Let me just zoom out a bit, there we go. Okay, our rental income, so Airbnbs, booking.com, so on and so forth, is 2,000 a month. So 2,000 a month, again, spread out over the four properties. So our total costs on a monthly basis for the four properties are 4,000 a month. Um, let's just say this includes you know, insurances and you know, to get the properties clean and so on and so forth. And our income is 2,000 a month every single time. So that means that with that rental income, we can cover all of the mortgages and we've still got money left as well. So bottom line, so let's say, um, you know, we, we have this as a total of 4,000 and we get 8,000 back. That means that bottom line, we are making 4,000 a month off properties. Okay, and let's face it, you know, you can live off that, right? That's, that's basically someone's monthly wage, if not more. Um, and, you know, if you've got that coming in passively, then happy days, right? You know, you can use that money to invest into other things, invest into more properties, or just, you know, live life on your own terms, whatever you want, because this is coming in passive. So this doesn't cost you any time. It just costs you a bit of money on the front end. And the great thing is, let's say um, this property is worth 100,000. So let's say, um, how could I best portray this? I'll let me try that out, actually, it might be easier. So the width of the property or the value of the property I bought is a hundred thousand. And obviously, you know, you put down a 20% deposit, but let's just, for the sake of this example, let's just say we don't put a deposit down, uh, we get the entire property on a mortgage. So our mortgage is 100% of the value of the property, which is a hundred thousand pounds as well. Okay, I'll just move this up a little bit because I know my camera is uh, at the right bottom. Now that is, in month one, yeah. So in month one, we've got a value uh, of a hundred thousand. We get the mortgage for a hundred thousand. In twelve months' time, because on average, obviously, you know, some some areas have a higher yield, some uh, areas have a lower yield. But on average, the value of the house, the house prices, is increasing by ten percent. Now, for those of you that are in the crypto world and so on and so forth, ten percent is obviously not a high annual yield, but um, you know, with rental income, it's just the way it is, right? It's 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 a long term play. It's um, you know, it, but it is obviously you know an increase. There is a yield. There is a return on investment there. So that means that the value after twelve months of the property has gone up by ten percent. So that means that the value is a hundred and ten thousand after twelve months. Now, 
obviously during that time when we're renting out the, pro the property the mortgage is being paid for as well because people that rent the airbnb or people that rent the property they're paying your mortgage so the mortgage after 12 months if the mortgage is a thousand a month which means that you know the mortgage um, basically decreases by 12k which means that we've got 88,000 left on our mortgage then 24 months time the value of that property is gone up by 10 percent again so it's basically 1.1 times 110 is 121,000 for the value of the property and then our mortgage has again gone down by 12k so our mortgage is not 788k uh, it's 76k okay so after 24 months as you can see that gap between the value of the property and our mortgage has just gotten bigger and bigger again so every single time this goes by um the the, the difference between the value of the property and our mortgage is increasing so I, here it's basically break even right and then here you know you've got um a difference between the mortgage and the value and in 24 months it's even bigger again so that means that your like your your net worth in terms of properties is increasing over time which makes it easier for you to leverage the property you've already got to invest into more properties it also makes it easy for you to get mortgages because obviously you know this is all pending the fact that uh, or pending the the question will you actually get the mortgage or not because that's obviously you know not as difficult or not as easy sorry as uh, i'm making out currently you know it is difficult to get a mortgage but this is all in a scenario where it is possible for you to get a mortgage which i will get onto in just a second uh, as you can see you know this is a very easy way to build up wealth build up net worth and to basically get yourself up on that property ladder okay now in terms of my situation um you know it was slightly different because i was based in the netherlands so i couldn't actually get a mortgage in the uk so what we actually did and it to be fair to give you us we you know um actually had um the, it just it all lined up for us basically uh, because i could not get our um the mortgage for the property that you know i initially showed in the video but because of the delay because we bought that uh property in 2016 if i'm not mistaken it might have even been 2015 um around the time that i started the agency so it was be, yeah it'll be 2016 and i put an initial uh, deposit down of 30k but because it was taking so long to get built you know there was a there was a renovations that needed to be done because this was an, a property that was already existing and they just renovated that whole building use all the deposits of the people that wanted to you know buy a property on that building to renovate the building there was a delay um you know there's all kinds going on and in the end we ended up just buying off that entire property so i didn't actually need the mortgage for property one because it's completely bought off so i actually um, i didn't pay a deposit i don't have a mortgage i just paid the total property price which i wouldn't recommend but in my uh you know in my scenario i basically had no choice because i couldn't get that mortgage it was hard enough for me to get a mortgage in the netherlands let alone a mortgage in the uk now what this actually done was it set me up for future mortgages because we can now leverage the the, the property that we've got um to get another mortgage so we could basically just go to the bank and say listen you know we want to get a mortgage can we use property one as equity to you know basically leverage and fund that mortgage so the great thing is we don't actually have the mortgage costs in the monthly you know income the the bad news is in this situation you know we actually had to pay down the full price of the property um you know to actually get all this up and running but this is basically my long-term plan in a nutshell guys and the aim is to get like 20 30 properties in the uk mainly um to get this done but you can you know just as easy set this up in the netherlands um you know set this up in the us even you can even flip properties you don't necessarily need to rent them out so you can buy a property for 100k knowing that it's going to go up by 10 percent in a year's time and then just sell it on for 110k hypothetically speaking you know if you want to do all that for 10k property that you know that's uh, that is up to you but this is basically my long-term plan guys um there's a lot of things that i still do not fully know and understand with all of this you know i'm still relatively new to this um only started this four years ago um and like i said by the end of q2 at the latest or q3 at the latest uh, of 2022 we should have uh, three properties all generating um at least you know let's say 
1500 to 1700 a month uh, profit and then like i said you know the more you build this up the more properties you've got the more uh, you get as a monthly income and like i said that can basically fund your retirement okay so that is all i've got for this video hope you enjoyed this video if you are active in the property world in the uk um just leave a comment below i'd love to know your thoughts on my long-term plan um or we could even connect via facebook or email or anything like that if you want to know more about like properties and so on and so forth um now with property number one sort of um you know as good as finished um and then properties two and three you know uh, almost finished i would like to do a bit more content on this because it, it is something that i find very interesting so if you want to know more as well leave a comment down below but for now i'm going to wrap up this video here thank you so much for watching like share comment subscribe and i'll see you all in the next video yeah.